Welcome back. South Africans will be spoiled for choice this festive season when they go shopping for new cell phones. Now, for the first time this year, the country has produced its own cell phone. The Libra phone is the first smartphone brand to be launched by a South African township-based company and entrepreneur as well as competing with a wide range of budget entry-level phones. Tell us more, a CEO of Lemog Group and once named the winner of Young Entrepreneur of the Year at the Standard Bank 20 Business Awards, Lebohang Abukubela. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You must be excited that you have your own cell phone and you're <laughs> the first one to come up with this brand. Is it believable? Actually, this morning I tweeted, I'm both nervous and excited. Mm -hmm. um, I think the major thing for me when I created this thing was to challenge a new narrative of owning our own consumer electronics. But I didn't anticipate how South Africans are going to receive it. And since we launched it on social media, or rather started talking about it on social media about a week ago, we've been trending since ever since. And so I woke up today, so we opened, we opened the, the pre-orders at 12 midnight today. Mm -hmm. By six minutes by 12, the first order came in. Um, we almost even sold out. So for me, that that's why I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm very excited. What does it take to produce a cell phone as a South African? <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> it takes a lot of money. Um, but I think the major thing is, you know, the beautiful thing about this digital environment or this digital world that we're living in is that we are all interconnected. You can be on the other side of the world and we can do business together and we can be able to basically what would have taken someone a year to make, you can make it in three, four, five okay, months. Okay, I want you to take me to the factory uh, shop floor. Mm -hmm. How do you make a cell phone? So a cell phone is made up of many components. So when a person sees a fingerprint scan, it's connected to a whole lot of things. So how it is produced is that it's a, what we call a conveyor belt system. So there are people that work on in each individual part of the phone. So there's a guy that deals with the screen, the guy that deals with the battery installation, the guy that deals with the camera, and, 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 and it just goes along that way. And that's how a phone is made. So that you said a lot of money. How do you source all these materials and make sure that you pay for them? So number one, um, it was going to be more expensive for me to source them locally. So I did outsource um, internationally to, to make sure that from a price perspective, we, we are competing within the price range. Um, but for, from a money perspective, uh, I own Lamog Group, which has, a, has other divisions. So we reinvested profits from that company. So we are basically self-funding at the moment. So, so how deep are you in this business in terms of ensuring that this cell phone hmm. actually l uh, reaches the last level of production. I'm talking in terms of the whole value chain. Yeah. If one were to ask you, mm -hmm. if you don't have to source material from abroad and produce it locally, where would you start in order to be the one who produces local components, mm. original materials or yes. raw materials yes. and so forth? Funny thing, I had a meeting about a few hours ago with a government department. So we have a vision 2030 to build a factory in Soshanguve, because my business is based in Soshanguve, to build a whole factory there to do everything and manufacture. And one of the conversations was going into TVET colleges and getting these students that are studying electronics or mechanical engineering and then having them basically skills transfer to help them build components. So we're actually building the components locally as well as assembling and then distribution. Okay. So essentially that's the plan. So we had it at 2030 after my meeting earlier on. It looks like it's going to be like a 2021 thing. But ultimately the main thing is we want to open up the factory in our backyard. How did you get the money? For? <laughs> Who funded you? Like I said, I used my own money. No, no, I just want to know because I mean like when people are starting business there are various way of uh, alternative funding models for entrepreneurs yes are you saying that you didn't even tap into all that so here's the thing when i first started my business my first business in 2009 i was fresh out of high school and um, my last business almost collapsed or rather the mock group one division almost collapsed because of being over indebted too quickly so i've learned not to launch with too much debt so I'd rather finance a little bit amount of stock and then reinvest profits ultimately. So I'm not in a rush to be number one in the country over a year. My main thing is sustainability and longevity. So usually that you take it one step at a time, reinvest profits. So for the next five to 10 years of this business, I'm not taking a cent of the business. We reinvent, we're reinvesting the money into the business. Right. So for South Africans to 
actually acclimatize themselves and uh, start considering this kind of cell phones. As you know, that they used to a uh, high-end and popular name brand. Sure. How seriously should they take your cell phone? So here's an interesting statistic. So we compete in the entry-level budget, um, budget smartphone category. Um, in that category alone last year, there were 15 million phones that were sold. That's way more than your up, your up market ones. So the market is there already. The one thing we did well is that within that category that we compete in, it's very low spec phones. So you find a phone having a 16 gig on board memory. We, we come in at standard 128 gigs. Um, you find a phone with a 1.5 gigahertz of RAM. That's the speed of the, of the phone. We come in at standard four gigs. So we've, we've basically given a top, top specs at an entry-level budget phone budget, basically. So our main thing for us is to give accessibility to anyone and everyone who wants to have a smartphone, and it's beginning the stages. And then as they grow in the smartphone lifestyle, I guess, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Libra being the first step in that. And also as we grow, we're going to introduce into better quality, better um, uh, categories, eventually being top-end as well. Okay, very briefly. Mm -hmm. Why the name Libra? <laughs> so it's two parts. I'm, I'm a Libra. And, but also, you see, the Libra sign is scales that we use in the justice system. It basically means bringing balance. So the narrative around this was to say, you know, I, I dream of a future where we get into a shop and you get into the electronics section. And then half of the electronics are international brands. Half of them are South African brands. When, have you ever seen a, t a South African TV? The brand that is a South African, for, for South African television. There's nothing like that. So we called it Libra because we are starting a new narrative to say it's high time we actually build our own stuff and not just start fashion brands like real hardcore industries. Like to a point we even have cars and call them Villa Casio or something. <laughs> that's, that's where we're aiming. All right. I mean, Lebo yeah. congratulations and all the best. Thank you. And uh, hopefully when we call you, you'll be saying Libra, hello. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you so much and all the best. Eh? Thank you. Okay. CEO of Lemoc Group and uh, once named winner of the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award at the Standard Bank 20 Business Awards. Lebo Mukubela and of course all the best to his new cell phone called Libra.